Today we're going to begin our discussion of bonding, and specifically we're going to look at the difference between ionic versus covalent bonds. If you're following along your text, we're just covering section 12.1 of your textbook. We want to begin by defining two terms. One, what is a bond? And two, what is bond energy? Well, bond is simply the force that holds two or more atoms together. Bond energy is the energy required to break a bond. So, once again, bond energy is the energy required to break a bond. And the bond is a force that holds two atoms together. Now, we're going to look at primarily the difference between ionic and covalent. You're familiar with this somewhat because we've done a lot of naming. You guys did a great job with naming. Now, you remember when we did naming of ionic compounds, that was composed of composed of a metal and a nonmetal. So sodium is a metal, chlorine is a nonmetal. So we say sodium chloride. So that is something that has an ionic bond because there are two ions. Sodium has a positive charge, chlorine has a negative charge. Covalent compounds, there are no charges in the atoms. They share electrons. So oxygen would be a covalent compound. Anything that's two nonmetal metals is covalent. So let's fill out part of this chart. And this is the main, main thing we're going to do today. Well, what is ionic compound? It's composed of a metal and a nonmetal. Covalent compound is two nonmetals. Now, what holds an ionic compound together? Well, you have two ions. One is positive. It's not a very good positive sign. One's negative. Those are held together by that electrostatic force. Electrostatic means there's a charge difference, one positive, one negative, and those are held together. What holds a covalent compound together is the fact those two nonmetals share electrons. So the sharing of electrons holds covalent compounds together. So the nucleus is positive, the electrons that are sharing are negative, and that force of those two nuclei trying to hold uh, uh, to those shared electrons is what holds that together. Formation, I'll show you an illustration in a second that will, that will show us that. Now, electronegativity difference, we're going to talk about electronegativity tomorrow, but if you, if, I'll give you a chart, and you'll always have this chart if I'm uh, asking you the differences, but electronegativity difference. Ionic compounds have an electronegativity difference of greater than 1.7. And so you just look at them, and if there's differences greater than 1.7, it's, it's considered ionic. If the electronegative difference is 0 to 1.7, we say it's covalent. So that's the difference between ionic versus covalent. Now, what are properties? There's three properties I'd like you to know for ionic compounds. Number one, they have a high melting point. Number two, they're mostly solids. And number three, they're good conductors in two states when they're aqueous and liquid. And I'll have that written down in a second in the next slide. Covalent compounds have a low melting point. They're poor conductors, and they ex they're common in any state. So here's a chart. Of, first, let's go to the electronegativity chart that I talked about. So let's, for, so for example, look at sodium and chlorine. The difference in, if you add those together, is, is 2.1. That's greater than 1.7, so that's definitely ionic. Let's look and say you have carbon dioxide. That's carbon and oxygen together. The difference between those is 1. That's less than 1.7, so that would be considered covalent. Now, also, you could have two oxygens together, so the difference in 3.5 and 3.5 is zero, so it's no difference in electronegativity, so that's definitely covalent. And also, how well, we're going to talk about the, the formation. This goes with the formation part. What happens if you have a sodium atom and a chlorine atom? Sodium atom has one lone, and if you look at the periodic table, that's actually a 3s1 electron. The chlorine, on the other hand, is 3s2, uh, 3p5. So it's not quite full, but this electron is transferred to this level. And then chlorine will have a full outer uh, S&P sublevel. Sodium will not. Sodium is positive. Chlorine is negative. That holds those together. What happens with chlorine? Chlorine has seven electrons, seven electrons. They share that one electron pair. And now they both have a full level outer level by sharing electrons. So here's a summary of the chart that I mentioned a while ago. Uh, the only thing, thing I added here that I didn't have before is I added examples of ionic compounds with these things like sodium chloride, sodium nitrate, barium hydroxide, nickel nitride. Now notice the clue for every one of these is the first thing written as a metal. Now for the covalent compounds, you have two nonmetals together, things such as water, carbon dioxide, dihydrogen tetroxide. So those basically the, the chart that we just went over filled out completely. And last, uh, I want to show you a couple other things. 
Ionic compounds versus covalent compounds, uh, this would be sort of an illustration of that. Well, with ionic compounds, they're not really joined. You have an ion that's positive, an ion that's negative. So that's just ionic. Now, covalent, we split into these two categories. Polar covalent is when they don't share equally. That would be something like water because they uh, hydrogen and oxygen have a different pool on the electrons. Nonpolar covalent would be something like oxygen where both electrons are exactly alike, or atoms are exactly alike, and they pull electrons exactly the same. So those electrons are perfectly distributed. So nonpolar covalent is the term for that. So we have non-polar uh, covalent where we have uneven sharing of electrons, and I showed you that in a second. And polar covalent is where we have even sharing of electrons, such as oxygen. So if we want to go back to the illustration I just showed you, the polar covalent, here we have uneven sharing, and the nonpolar covalent, we have even sharing. So there we have it. So that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you tomorrow.